I'd be the first to congratulate your opportunity to uh, chair this debate and uh, wish you a happy new year. And uh, I'd like also to just acknowledge the very generous comments of Sue Moroni to her uh, parliamentary colleagues, uh, Tim McIndoe in uh, Hamilton West, uh, for his promotion, also to uh, Jamie Lee Ross for his, and also to uh, Honourable Simon Bridges for his uh, promotion to Cabinet in this last uh, week. Great to see uh, these MPs uh, rising up and being aspirational uh, for this country. And, uh, Mr Speaker, I think that, Ms. Madam Speaker, uh, I think before I start on my, uh, on my um, contribution to this debate, I was taken aback by Sue Moroni's uh, reference to Groundhog Day. And uh, she started off 2013, five long years. I look forward to her speech next year, 2014, six long years. And her 2015 speech, seven long years. Her 2016 speech, eight long years, nine long years. And her 2018 speech, ten long years of a wonderful national government. Isn't that possible? What a wonderful thought that is for the people of New Zealand to think that to such a proactive, sensible, uh, aspirational government uh, could be in place to lead this country forward uh, in its goals. Madam Speaker, I believe that we have every reason to be optimistic in New Zealand. If we are bold in our aspiration as we are, if we are sound in our judgment, and if we make the right decisions, then we can go further than any generation before us. This is possible, and our young people look to their future in New Zealand will depend upon it. We were elected in 2008 because of our aspiration. We were re-elected in 2011 because we delivered. And I believe that the people of New Zealand stand firm behind us. 2013 will be a year where, fuelled by our belief that New Zealand can and should do better, that we continue to see positive reforms that lift our educational outcomes, that increase our economic activity, grow our job market, that increases the opportunities for New Zealanders. And I believe that is what we will see in this year, 2013. This government enjoys continued support because New Zealanders believe in the common sense of our values and the soundness of our policies and, de and decisions and respect uh, the record of our delivery of these policies. As the MP for New Plymouth, the heart of the energy province, Taranaki, I continually see the economic transformation that a responsible use of our natural resources has brought to our region that the oil and gas industry has risk associated with it and that this risk largely sits with environmental and health and safety outcomes uh, is accepted. We know that. But what hasn't been fully explored is the flip side. The economic reward the industry can and could contribute not only to our region in Taranaki but also to other regions around this nation. Madam Speaker, this golden weather we're experiencing, it reminds me of when I was a kid growing up under the shadow of Mount Taranaki. Long, warm summer days in a beautiful environment that our province is. To me, that is the Kiwi way of life. But the Kiwi way of life is not just about the world in which we live, it's, and it's also about affording the great way of life we have come to appreciate, know and love here in New Zealand. As individuals, been able to earn good incomes and jobs for which we receive excellent training so we can buy our own home and not end up in a cheap, pokey little box in a Labour government ghetto somewhere. No, we want to build the economy and lift New Zealanders' skill base so that they can earn high wages and buy their own homes, that we would have high incomes and lower interest rates, which we have seen increase over these last four years of government. There are some things that government can and should provide to its population. As a country, a world-class education system, which we are building, modern health care, 
and social services which appropriately support our population, and excellent infrastructure, such as, for example, I remember growing up in a South Taranaki town called Hara, going to the Hara Town Baths. The Hara Town Baths every day of the summer. And then they built this fantastic aquatic centre that's now called the Powerco Aquatic Centre. And occasionally we would go up to New Plymouth, where I now reside, and have the privilege of being the MP for, and go to uh, the Todd Aquatic Centre. And we have these fantastic community amenities, both of them sponsored and named after energy companies. And so what I'm saying, Madam Speaker, is that hand in glove with our great way of life in Taranaki, our beautiful environment, is this relationship we have with energy. And I believe that in this nation we need to embrace, we need to embrace energy as our way of life. We know that the engine room of our nation is the economy and the fuel of our economy is energy. We need to understand that and we need not to run away and hide from it. Madam Speaker, the province of Taranaki is an example to all New Zealanders. What happens when you responsibly but actively utilise your natural resources, be that oil and gas exploration or be that dairying, which has a, a tremendous history uh, in that province. Hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars right now are being invested in uh, my province, Taranaki, at the present and over the next year in exploration in particular. That is creating employment, that is creating great opportunities for New Plymouth and Taranaki companies, that is creating a great upskilling of capability uh, with the workforce, giving them a world-class opportunity that I know that engineering companies in Taranaki then begin to export their capability, uh, be that through engineering uh, in Australasia or Papua New Guinea or whether they are building super yachts sold around the world. All of this is because of this industry that has been in our province for uh, six decades or more. Even though we can go way back to the 1880s when oil was first discovered there, um, it is particularly since Maui uh, came on stream that we have seen this prolifer pr proliferation of tremendous uh, skill and uh, development of, of industry. Some estimate that there are around 7,000 jobs, 11.5% of all work in Taranaki because of the sector. That is significant. And when I say that Taranaki can be an example to all of New Zealand, what we need to say is what we need to see is that the step change that energy and uh, development uh, and exploration can bring to this country can be very, very significant, Madam Speaker a region with the lowest unemployment in the country, perhaps even in the developed world. Let's not be afraid of this. Let's be responsible. Let's be active. Let's, be, uh, let's ensure that we do think everything excellently, but let's do it. Let's ensure that we grasp these opportunities that are before us, that we can see our young people have the employment, that we can have the, the inflow of revenues into our government, uh, that can provide all the things that New Zealanders desire and look for. You know, the oil and gas recruitment drive we read in the New Zealand Herald uh, in November gave Taranaki the country's highest advertised average pay packet of over $93,000. That's a huge amount of money. Median household incomes in Taranaki are now over $68,000, the highest in the country outside of the main centres. We are very proud of what we've achieved in our province. Uh, we are very proud of the opportunities that we have taken hold of and that we have done this responsibly to our environment and to our great workforce. And I say to New Zealanders who are listening tonight that if you want to see what New Zealand can look like under this government, under this government that is prepared to pursue these opportunities, then look to Taranaki and see what that community is able to do and produce and the benefits that have come back to it. And you will see that there is a vibrant community, that there are people who have a future, that people who have a hope, that people have opportunities for uh, gaining world-class education, training and skills that will take them anywhere in this country and anywhere in the world. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I call David Clark. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, what we heard there...